signs of emotional abuse. I'm talking in this case, uh, uh, kind of gearing it somewhat to kids. I wanted to put a video out every now and then, at least for, to make sure I talk to kids, is because you don't have a big frame of reference. You don't have a lot of other experiences to judge from. And so this is all you know. And so it can be hard to kind of figure out what's abusive and what's not. I've been getting some questions about that. And, some, and so I want to kind of draw some distinctions so that kids can get, so that, you know, teenagers can get some idea about what would be normal for a parent and what's, what's stepping over into abusive behavior and what to do about it. Okay, so five signs of emotional abuse. A degradation, or putting you down, making jokes at your expense. That's your feelings. You know, like if you feel upset about that, they tell you that you're overly sensitive. This person also, typically speaking, will be able to dish it out, but not be able to take it at all. They will be super, super sensitive to any real or perceived criticism. They'll have no problem dishing it out, saying harsh and cruel things, degrading you in front of others, elevating themselves at your expense for, make, for putting you down. Two, controlling or dominating. This isn't about strict parents or parents who have rules. This is about when you have to plan your whole day around someone. You can't do anything unless they think it's okay. Um, they control your money. They control things basically that you can control yourself. You should not do things for your kids that they can do for themselves. And you need to nudge them in that direction, show them how to do things, and help them learn how to, how to be competent. And basically teach them to not need you. That's the role of parents is to, you know, successful, the, the job done successfully ends with them not, not needing to rely on you. And that's, that's a very unique job in that way. And success in it means that you've worked yourself out of a job, essentially, and into a friendship, hopefully. Three is accusing or blaming. So these will have nothing is ever their fault. Everything is always someone else's fault. And again, this is this this will also be when they're uh, very very sensitive to any kind of criticism, real or perceived. But nothing, yeah, nothing's ever their fault. They don't take personal responsibility for anything going on in their life. So you're, if there's any conflict with you, it's always your fault. And sometimes it will even be, you know, I've heard ridiculous things about someone. Will, someone will, uh, like actually have a physical and and he would say things. Why do you make me do it? Okay, number four is neglect. And this is when parents, in order to manipulate their kids, in order to control their kids, they do things like freeze them out, don't talk to them, or cl shut down, or you know, don't basically take care of their basic needs when they usually do. Or don't give them rides to places they need to go, or as a as a punishment. And a lot of times it'll be sort of unspoken. It'll just be sort of like. A way of a way of controlling with a passive aggressive sort of manipulation, but you know there'll be things like um, you know I've heard stories about someone getting grounded and then their mother their mother would just freeze them out, keep them home, not let them go anywhere, just so that they could ignore them. Five, the last the last one is enmeshment or codependence. This is when someone sees you as an extension of themselves. They don't have appropriate boundaries, tell you inappropriate things about themselves. And then they will also do inappropriate things with you. Like they'll, you know, maybe look in your journal. They'll tell a third party some personal story about you that isn't theirs to tell. They just have a real hard time making a differentiation between themselves and you. You're like an extension of their of themselves, and they can't make a distinction between you and them where you have your own wishes, wants, and needs and your own right to privacy. Your stories are about their stories to tell. Uh, other things to look for, if they are um, using economic power to control you, threatening to leave you, threatening abandonment, uh, using looks or gestures that intimidate you, into tapping into wounds that they know you have, or smashing things, breaking things, controlling you through minimizing, denying, or blaming, making light of abuse, not taking your concerns seriously, continually criticizing you, calling you names, or shouting at you. 
emotionally degrading you in private, but acting charming in public. That's a biggie. That's always a real popular one. Humiliating you in private or in public and um, withholding approval, appreciation, or affection as a punishment. Those are all really abusive things to do. So, you know, take a peek and see if any of those things are happening. Emotional abuse is not your fault. It is not your fault. Of course, you know, no abuse is your fault, but emotional abuse can be a tricky one because it is usually in private and it's not validated. And so why they're doing this, it's, you know, it might be that they, if it's your boyfriend or something, maybe they're trying, maybe they're getting afraid you're going to break up with them. If it's a parent, maybe they're getting afraid that you're getting to the age where you might be thinking about moving away from home or you're getting independent and they want to maybe undermine your confidence so that you don't change things. There's never a good reason for it. It's never okay. You need to get real clear on what your needs are and understand that you're going to have to meet those needs somewhere else. And the sooner that you can come to grips with the fact that you have an emotionally abusive parent, the better off you're going to be. And you're just really ahead of the game if you are figuring this out before you're even an adult. That's just really great. You saved yourself decades, you know, trying to make this thing work, trying to please these people. Narcissists cannot be pleased. The prognosis is not good for this kind of a relationship. If this is your parent, then you need to be making plans to get, get out on your own. If this is what they're doing, then they are not going to meet your needs. And you're going to pay such a high price to get whatever small little bits or small needs they might be meeting or, or potentially would be meeting. You're going to be such a huge price for it. It just wouldn't be worth it. If there's any chance of you salvaging any kind of a relationship with your parents, it's going to have to do with you making really clear boundaries and getting your needs met elsewhere and, and really not needing them for anything and just having it be a really low key, low expectation type of relationship. And that's only if you are really good at putting in boundaries and they are okay with meeting them. They're okay with not trying to cross over and infringe in your space. And if they are doing some of these things, they're probably not going to do that very well. I would say that the two that would be the hardest would be enmeshment and controlling and dominating. If they're doing those two things, your chances of getting them to adhere to any kind of boundaries is probably pretty low. So just understand that emotional abuse is not ever your fault and that if someone is abusing you, whether it's your boyfriend, your parent, anyone, it's, it's not okay and it's not something you need to put up with. And most likely, it's also not something that you're going to be able to effectively change. Thanks for stopping by. I'll talk with you again real soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.